Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Jeff Klenda from UR Energy. How are you today, Jeff? Doing great, Tracy. Thanks for having me on again. Jeff, I have to tell you, your Q2 news release you put out yesterday was one of the most well-written news releases I've ever had the pleasure of reviewing. So why don't you go ahead and I don't even know where to start with the highlights from that other than let me say congratulations. This is your seventh year anniversary for production. So how about you tell us the highlights, please? Thank you. Let me start by saying, first of all, uh, credit where credit is due. The uh, the wordsmithing on the press release was done by Penny Gopler, our general counsel, and Roger Smith, our CFO. So credit to them. They're they're both excellent wordsmiths, and uh, I think that they do a very good job of uh, highlighting the well, capturing the high points of our quarterlies. So when you talk about our our quarter and our seventh year, we're very pleased. We started production in August of 2013. And I guess the thing that's most astonishing about it is that during that time, we've emerged as one of the lowest cost producers, not just in North America, but globally. And so that's something you really don't know until you turn on the pumps and you produce for a while and you and you see how low you can go in terms of those C1 cash costs. And we've been nothing but pleasantly surprised by Lost Creek. In addition to that, our recovery rate is in excess of 90%. So not only have we captured at a percentage that's far greater than we would have ever anticipated. But surprise, amazingly, we are still producing minimal pounds, but we're still producing out of our first mine unit seven years after we first started production there. That's extraordinary considering that most mine units last about two and a half years, three years before they're done. So uh, it's, an, a, it's a beast of a project. We have, uh, we're in the second mine unit now, and we have 10 mine units to go after this. So it's going to be a long life project as well. We're very pleased. With it. Of course, many investors out there are very well aware of the fact that uranium is deemed to be a critical min mineral. And uh, in your news release in particular, you were talking about the Russian suspension agreement. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, the Russian suspension agreement, uh, there are a lot of things going on politically right now. Russian suspension agreement is one of them, along with the nuclear fuel working group, but Russian suspension agreement, I would classify as being far and away the most significant. And the reason for that is, is that this is the termination on December 31st of a year of an agreement that's been in place for 28 years with the Russians. And I know that we don't have a lot of time, but maybe a little background is in order here. It was put in place in 1992 for all the right reasons. Uh, Plutonium, the wall had just come down Plutonium was disappearing, scientists were disappearing, bombs were disappearing. And we looked at this as a way, way that we could purchase blended, down blended plutonium from the Russians and take this out of the market. And so it was done for the right reasons. Uh, unfortunately, Vladimir Putin turned it into something much different than that when he took power at the beginning of the century. And uh, so the Russian suspension agreement has now unfortunately morphed into a means by which the Russians have been dumping product into our country. And by that, I mean nuclear fuel. And don't get me wrong, I don't blame them for being cost uh, conscious, uh, that is our nuclear utilities, but they're lapping it up with a spoon. And in so doing, they are giving the Russians just an inordinate amount of control. And we are developing an inordinate amount of dependency on this nuclear fuel and it's a very uh it's to say the least it's unwise energy policy and it's downright dangerous national security policy so this is in the process of being renegotiated they are undergoing what is called right now an administrative review that was supposed to end two days ago on august 4th and instead they told it forward t-o-l-l-e-d meaning they extended it by 60 days so the deadline now for the administrative review is october 5th so by that date, they either have to amend and extend the Russian suspension agreement or the, the investigation and the tariffs that were in place in 1992 will resume. So the suspension in suspension agreement was the suspension of the investigation and the tariffs. And if we can't come to an agreement with them in terms of amending and extending that agreement, then those will go back into force. And so I think that there's a real incentive by the Russians to enter into a new agreement. 
but it will extend for a 20 year period of time. And that is the great significance of it. So the Department of Commerce is, is spearheading this, their enforcement division. We are working with them. We do have standing. So we are uh, stakeholders in the process. We're engaged in the negotiations. So I'm limited as to what I can say. I'm bound by confidentiality with respect to those negotiations. But since we are going to have to live with the outcome for 20 years, it's absolutely critical that commerce get this right. Because once it's in place, it's an international uh, um, uh, treaty between two countries, and we have to honor it, just as we have for the last 28 years. And I think many of your shareholders are exceedingly appreciative of the work that you've done behind the scenes in addressing this issue. Was it not correct, Jeff, that you were critical for this nuclear, what is now the nuclear fuel working group? Well, the nuclear, the genesis of the nuclear fuel working group was actually the Section 232 trade action, which we brought uh, at the Department of Commerce uh, in January of 2018. Uh, I personally was responsible for starting Section 232. I'm exceedingly grateful to our partners over at Energy Fuels for uh, being our partners throughout this entire process. The president had the opportunity to impose a quota which would have frankly saved the front end of the fuel cycle. And as Senator Barrasso said when he chose to take no action, we missed a great opportunity there. And he was absolutely right. But what's came from the nuclear fuel or what came from the uh, uh, section 232 trade action was the nuclear fuel working group. Originally they had 90 days to come up with a method by which they were going to save the entire fuel cycle. I thought that was a lofty goal for 90 days. It actually took a bit longer than that but it was delivered over to the White House. The report was in November of 2019 and the report was delivered to the was made public on April 23rd of this year. And so it provided for a lot. It provided for uh, the reduction in the amount of material that we have become so reliant upon from Russia. It also called for the development of a uranium reserve to be put in place in this country. And uh, so uh, we, we need to replenish what is called the American Assured Fuel Supply. And so that's what this was designed to do initially to the tune of about 17 to 19 million pounds, but it allocates or it portends to allocate $150 million per year for the next 10 years. And that is solely for the preservation and revitalization of the front end of the fuel cycle, of the fuel cycle. that's us, the miners, and the, the sole converter in the United States, and that's Converdine. Well, of course, we have a lot of investors out in our investment audience at Investor Intel that really do respect, you know, uh, CEOs that are leaders and in understanding geopolitical issues. And of course, in your case, you're certainly a leader for sustainability mandates in the United States. So we just like to thank you for that. And on another front, there seems to be a buzz in uranium. <laughs> Jeff, can I get you to switch hats and have a comment for us on that? Well, I'm not sure which bias you're referring to, the built-in anti-nuke bias, which is always with us. Uh, that's something that we, we constantly have to overcome. But the harsh, you know, look, I, 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 I go to a barbecue and I get somebody telling me just mindlessly, I don't like nuclear. It's kind of like, well, okay, but, you know, every fifth time you turn on a light in your house, you can thank me because we're 20% of the electricity grid, whether you understand that or not. So we are a critical part of energy infrastructure here in the United States and allowing ourselves to become what is now 100% dependent on foreign countries for our nuclear fuel is absolutely absurd. If, and the, the problem is, is a good number of our military bases, in fact, all of our domestic military bases are tied to that fuel grid. And this was another glaring risk and exposure that was exposed by the, the the working group report when it came out on the 23rd of April was that this is a really this is a huge vulnerability for this country. So yes, we deal with that bias all the time. There's uh, and what we all we can do is try and educate. And one of the great challenges for us has been educating the members of Congress. That's probably the greatest challenge because 
they don't think geo, they think politically, but they don't think geopolitically. And trying to get them to understand something beyond bringing home the pork for their own district is oftentimes very challenging. Fortunately, we have some very good champions in Congress like Liz Cheney and, and Senator Barrasso and, and Enzi and Lada and others that uh, have introduced legislation now that would mandate uh, the building, rebuilding, I should say, of a nuclear, uh, of a, a uranium reserve here in the United States. So uh, these are steps in the right direction. Well, speaking of steps in the right direction, based on the most recent news release I've read about you, you guys managed to continue to achieve your mandates, you have money in the bank, and uh, you're also leaders in our community. So, Jeff, would you mind updating us more regularly? We'd love to have you on once a month to continue to discuss these topics, but thank you so much for joining us today. Happy to do that. The battle will continue to rage on. So there's always something to talk about. So it's been my pleasure. Thanks for having me again.